Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Mr. K's 30 Minutes of Math. Oops, I had the wrong screen on. Um, it is good to see all of you, or at least join all of you, for today's lesson. So let's get to it. I'm going to jump right back to <laughs> the riddle from yesterday. Here it is. We had six black socks, eight brown socks, four blue socks, and two red socks in a sock drawer. And so the question is, how many socks, what's the minimum number of socks that you would have to pull out to ensure that you got a matching pair? So let's think about this. Um, here's, I'm gonna do my various socks, so bear with me. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Those are our black socks. I know they're not the prettiest, my apologies. All right, let's do brown. And we had eight brown socks. So one, two, three, four, five, six seven, eight, whoops, that's all I need, <laughs> okay. And then I had four blue socks, let's put those up here. One, two, three, four. And I had two red socks, let's put those down here. One, two. All right, so I wanna get a matching pair for sure. And let's, again, as I shared yesterday, we're gonna pretend that our eyes are closed, because obviously if our eyes were open, we could just pick two that match. So if our eyes are closed and we stick our hand in the drawer and pull out a sock, we could wind up with any one of these, right? We might get a black, a blue, a brown, or a red. Let's just suppose that we pulled out a black sock. Okay, so the question is, how many more would we need to pull out? to get a match. All right, so let's say I put my hand back in the drawer. If I pulled out another black sock, I'd be lucky and be able to have a match right away. But we are not certain that we'd get another black sock. We might get a blue sock. Okay, so that's two pulls. Let's say I stick my hand in again and pull out another sock. And I'd be lucky if I got a blue or a black, but I might not. I might get a brown. So I still don't have a match. And then if I stuck my hand in again, I'd be lucky if I got a black, a blue, or a brown, but I might not, I might get a red. So that's four. The next time I pull a sock out, I'm gonna have to get a black, a blue, a brown, or a red, which means I'm going to have a match. So five socks, you pull out five socks and you are guaranteed to get a match. Well done, I see a couple of you wrote that in. Fantastic work. All right, let's look at our homework from last night. The question was, what is the equation for a line that has these two points, two, zero, and zero, one? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at it. Two, zero would be right here. And zero, one would be right here. All right, and so if I pulled out my trusty ruler, our line would look something like this. Whoops, that wasn't very good. And since it's a line, it goes on forever. So I'm going to give arrows to both ends. So let's go ahead and try our equation. Y equals, M is our slope. So let's take a look. We rise one, and then we're running two to the left. So negative two. Now remember, one over negative two is the same as negative one over two or just negative one half. I'll leave it like this for now. Negative one half x 
plus, where does it cross the y axis? It crosses at one. So y equals negative one half x plus one. Okay, let's go ahead and try a couple more like this. Go ahead and give this one a try and we will be right back. Okay, welcome back. Let's take a look. Let's start with our first point, one, two, one, two. So I'm going to go to the right one and up two. I'm just going to erase our, our lines so that we can see this clearly. And then two, four. So to the right two and then up four, which would take me right there. Okay, now let's get out our friend the ruler and go ahead and draw our line. Whoops, I had the eraser still on, sorry about that. Okay, now there's our line and it goes on forever, so I have errors. Okay, so now we can draw our equation. Y equals, what is our slope? Let's see, well, we're rising to, and then we're running one to the right, so it's positive, all right? Y equals two over one, or two X, plus, and where does it cross the Y axis? Well, it crosses right here at zero. So our Y intercept would be zero. So we could write this as Y equals, 2x, and that's it, because we're adding nothing as our y-intercept. Oh, I'm hearing that we are frozen again. My apologies. Let's go ahead and redo our screen sharing and see if that will fix it. Hold on one second. Almost there. Hmm, it seems to be giving us a little trouble, so let's stop the share, and let's go ahead and try it one more time. Hold on one second, friends. And there we go. And let me just pull it up. There you go. So y equals 2 over 1x plus 0, which is the same as y equals 2x. And that should make sense because, check this out, very cool. If x is 1, so I would have 2 times 1, because x would be replaced by 1, then the y would be 2. See how that works out? Similarly, if 
the x is 2, so I replaced the x with a 2 and did 2 times 2, then the y would be 4. So that is the way we can check to make sure that our equation is correct. All right, let's go ahead and try that one. Oh, it's stuck again. Oh, there it is. Perfect place to stop. Let's take a look. <clears throat> negative 2, negative 4. So I would go negative 2 for my x and then negative 4 for my y. So there's our first point. Hmm. I notice. Okay, yes, that is working on the screen. Okay. And then 2, negative 2. So positive 2 for our x, and then negative 2 for our y. OK, let's get our ruler out and connect these two. Whoops, I did it again. My apologies. All right, here we go. All right, now. The question is, what is our equation? Well, let's go ahead and start. Y equals, what is our slope? All right, let's see. One, two, rise of two. And then one, two, three, four, a run of four. So two fourths. Two fourths x plus, and where does it cross the y axis? It crosses right there at negative three. Now, here's a little interesting uh, note I want you all to be aware of. We can write this as y equals 2 fourths x plus a negative 3, or that is the same as minus 3. So we can rewrite it as, I'll do it up here, y equals 2 fourths x minus 3. And by the way, we know 2 fourths is the same as 1 half. So, so really, we could write it as y equals 1 half x minus 3. But y equals 2 fourths x minus 3 is also completely fine. And we should be able to check. So let's look. Uh, let's use. Uh, 2 and negative 2. Now, I know this gets into negative numbers, so it's a little bit tricky, but if we replaced our x here with 2, so we did 2 times 1 half, well, that would be 1. So we'd have 1 minus 3. If I'm 1 foot above ground and then I go 3 feet down, 
I'm going to wind up two feet underground or negative two, which is exactly what we would expect. Okay, good job, everybody. I know these are tricky. I'm very proud of you for digging in. Let's try another. Go ahead and give this one a try. Okay, welcome back everybody. Let's take a look at this one. I saw some fantastic answers coming in. Negative four, positive one, negative four. Let's see, one, two, three, there you go, negative four, positive one. So that's our first point. And then we have positive four, positive three. Let's see, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three. There it goes. Okay, now let's bring out our friend, the ruler, and we will connect these two dots. I'm gonna to remember to switch back to my marker. And there is our line going on forever. <clears throat> okay, now let's go ahead and work on our equation. Starting y equals, and our slope, let's see, one is our rise. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is our run. By the way, we know two eighths is the same as one fourth. So we could also write it that way. And that should make sense to you because watch this. I'll do this in yellow. Rise of one, run of four, which takes us to our line. So yes, it works. Okay, two eighths or one fourth x plus where does it cross the y-axis? Well, right there at 2. So y equals 2 eighths x plus 2. And it looks like you guys all got that. Fantastic. And again, we can always check to see if we did this accurately by plugging in our coordinates. So let's look. Um, let's use this one, 4, 3. If my x is four, I would have four times two eighths. So if I had two eighths and two eighths and two eighths and two eighths, I would have eight eighths, which we know is one. All right, so then I'd have one 
plus two, that gives me three. Well, look, there it is, three. So it works, fantastic, guys. <clears throat> All right, here is our math joke of the day. Why was algebra so easy for the ancient Romans? Why was algebra so easy for the ancient Romans? Donna writes in, it was a piece of pie. <laughs> Not bad. Uh, Ezra writes in, they knew all the numerals. Uh, Not bad either. Here, let's get our drum roll. Because X was always 10. And you know, in algebra, you're always trying to figure out what does X equal? Well, in Roman numerals, we know X is always 10. It's a joke because it wouldn't always be 10 in an algebraic equation, but if you were using Roman numerals, X would always be 10. I like that one. Uh, I have a soft spot in my heart for Roman numerals. I just think they're kind of cool, it's a special way of representing numbers makes your brain work in kind of a different way. All right, let's go back to our lines and uh, I want to explore something a little bit different with you all. So go ahead and take a second, look at this line and I want you to write the equation for this line, go ahead. Okay, welcome back. Let's take a look at this one. Um, I am going to pick this point right here and, and this point right here. Um, but there are other places you could have chosen. If you did go with those, we would have y, whoops, ooh, I do not like that. Let's go with this. y equals, what would our slope be? Let's see, rise of 1 and then a run to the right, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's positive. Y equals one sixth X plus, where does it cross the Y axis? Well, it crosses right there at one. So Y equals one sixth X plus one. By the way, one sixth is, yes, exactly the same as two twelfths. So if you did Y equals two twelfths, x, uh, you would be exactly right. Okay, so remember, this one is y equals 1 sixth x plus 1. My question is, what is this one now? Go ahead and do that.
Okay, welcome back. Let's take a look at this one. I am gonna go with this point right here and this point right here. So y equals, what is my rise? One. What is my run? One, two, three, four, five, six to the right. One sixth x plus, and where does it cross the y-axis? It crosses right there at four. So my question is, why, not why, how is this similar to the last one? And I see uh, a couple of you wrote in that they have the same slope. So let's look, we have one sixth here. I'm gonna go back and we had one sixth on this one as well, or two twelfths, same thing. And if you look at the two lines, what you'll notice is as uh, a couple of you wrote in, it's the same line just in a different place. Another way of saying it, um, as uh, a couple of you wrote, is these are parallel lines. So this is the uh, second line. The first line would be, let's go ahead and just draw it in so you can see it. It was like this. Let me go ahead and get that in. So there you have it. If two lines have the same slope, they are parallel to each other. Two lines that have the same slope are parallel. The only thing that is different about them is they have a different y-intercept, a different place where they cross the y-axis. Okay, uh, here's what I'd like you to do for this one before we wrap up. I want you to write the equation for this line, and then I want you to write another equation for another line that is parallel to the first one. And you can pick any other line that you want as long as it's parallel to the first one. Go ahead and work on that. Okay, welcome back. Let's take a look. Uh, start with our first line right here. Y equals, um, let me put my points in. I'm gonna go with this point right here and this point right here. So my slope would be a rise of two and a run to the right of three. So Y equals two thirds X plus where does it cross the y-axis? It crosses right there at negative two. Now remember, we can write this, instead of plus negative two, we can just write minus two. So y equals two thirds x minus two. And so the question is, what would another line 
that would be parallel to this line, what would its equation be? And there is an infinite number of answers. Um, and let's see, Ezra writes in y equals two thirds plus five. Yes, that would work because all it needs is the same slope. So y equals two thirds x plus five would work. And Delilah writes in y equals two thirds x plus four. Yes, that would work. You could do y equals two thirds x plus 100. Y equals two thirds X minus 92. All of them will work as long as they have the same slope, they will be parallel to each other. All right, here's one just like that for tonight's homework. Go ahead and take a screenshot or a picture so that you can work on that tonight. Again, you're going to write the equation for that line and then I want you to write another equation or another line that would be parallel to the first one. Okay, and then last here is our riddle for the day. I like this one a lot. We have a series of numbers and the question is what comes next in the sequence? So first we have one, then one one, then two one, then one two one one, then one 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 two two one, then three, one, two, two, one, one. What would come next in this sequence? All right, good luck with that, everybody, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.